Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about how to record a band live in the same room. And I also wanna give you three essential techniques to use when recording live. She never said she didn't love me, so I never let go. And I've been like a backseat driver while my mind disintegrates. So in this video, I'm featuring a great band called the Brothers Gillespie. They're a local band here in Asheville. And this song is called Bill Berry Blues. And one of the best things about recording live is that you actually get a piece of that live performance in the studio. There's something that is really cool that happens, that it's very hard to formulate and create when you multi-track and when you build a song piece by piece. So I actually have a whole course about recording live in the studio, and I'll put a link in the upper right if you're interested in really going deep with this. There's a lot to learn here. Let's just solo some of these instruments. So I'll play you kind of the main mix for maybe 30 seconds or so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and solo each instrument just to see what they sound like and to see how bad the bleed from other instruments are getting into those mics. Out of another window. I can use a few new friends or a lover or two But I just settle for somewhere to wash my clothes Now the first technique today is to group your instruments based on the volume of that instrument. Second one is to aim the microphones and the nulls. And finally, the third technique is to aim the sources. And I'll get to that in a moment. First, let's go over the grouping of the instruments according to their volume. So if you had multiple acoustic guitars, a banjo, uh, a mandolin, uh, an upright bass, um, that would be a great grouping of like volume instruments, okay? Uh, that would sound fantastic. You could put up a bunch of condensers and I mean, it would be an amazing sounding recording. This works because we're choosing instruments of similar volume. We don't have a Marshall stack next to a mandolin, okay? That just doesn't work. Another thing that doesn't work is an acoustic guitar in the same room as a drum set, okay? That's pretty hard to get around. In that case, we just, we can't do that, okay? Now, we could maybe DI the acoustic, but really as far as the same room recording, it has to be of similar volume. 
So in the case of the acoustic guitar, along with the rest of the band, there really has to be some separation. And that's a case where the acoustic guitarist would be on the other side of the glass in the control room with me. Uh, same thing with a vocalist, okay? It's just, it's not close enough in volume to the other sources, drums, guitar amp, bass amp, so we have to have separation there. If we don't have that separation, then we have problems. One example in my own recording here is the piano. The piano is close, but it's still a little bit too quiet. And because the volume is uh, not very loud from this piano, we have to use more gain from the mic. Using more gain from the mic means there's more bleed from other instruments. Check out this piano track and you'll see what I mean. Same concept, but on the lead guitar track. Check out the bleed on this track. Again, this works much better because we're actually grouping the drums with something else that's loud and the bleed really isn't a problem, right? So you really don't have to be afraid of bleed. But if there is bleed, then that moves us to technique number two, uh, which is aiming the microphones. And there's really two ways to use microphones in a live situation. You can use proximity. So the closer you are to something, the more the source you're getting and less of the noise around it. Or you can do something like the polar patterns where you're using the null to your advantage to really dial out all the noise and focus on what you want. If you notice on this rhythm uh, electric guitar track, I used uh, an old 44BX mic. Thanks to Polystax here on YouTube, he let me borrow that for a couple weeks. And that is a ribbon microphone. It has nulls out to the sides. So I'm not only recording the amp, but I'm also not recording the drums and recording the lead guitar, which is on the other side of the mic. We see this happening in other places, like the lead guitar again. The 421 is aimed a little bit away, a little bit at an angle. Um, I'm not sure if I did that with the RE20 on the bass cab, but I know I've done it in the past. Same thing with that vocal mic. Uh, even though this wasn't really uh, meant to be a keeper vocal track, I did my best to aim the null of the SM7B at the drum set. Of course, there was still too much noise bouncing off the back walls for this to even be possible. Uh, but the idea is still at practice here, it's still at play here. Get my pride back down inside if I wait. She never said she didn't love me, so I never let go. And I've been like a backseat driver while my mind disintegrates. Now, aside from using the polar pattern, I mentioned that uh, you can get just close to something, right? Use proximity and increase the ratio of direct sound to indirect sound. And we see that this is not really happening in the drum overhead. And so what's the catch? I mean, do we have lots of guitar amp, lots of bass amp in the overhead? Well, uh, you know, that actually moves to the next point, which is to aim the sources. And really, there's some interesting things that happen with guitar amps. If you slowly turn the amp, you'll find that there's usually an angle um, that has the least amount of sound coming out of it. And you find that angle and you point it right at the drum overheads. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a specific technique I use for the drums. There's a specific technique I use for each of these guitar amps and the layout of the room. Um, I cover several different ways to lay out a room in a live recording in my course. So in review, we have that we're uh, pairing instruments of like volume. So similar volume go in the same room. Different volume, you have to separate them out. Next, we go to uh, aiming the microphones. So we can use proximity or we can use the polar pattern. Use proximity to increase that ratio of direct sound to indirect sound, or you can use that polar pattern to uh, null out or cancel out sound from the drum set, just like we did on that ribbon mic on that guitar amp. 
And then finally, if we can't get the mic close to something or a mic is just vulnerable, like the drum overheads, then we can use kind of the uh, sources and aim those sources in such a way that it minimizes the amount that's going into that overhead. Probably two things I would change about this recording specifically. Um, I kind of need to build some sort of case for the piano that protects the piano uh, from sound just coming straight off the drum set into the soundboard of the piano. Um, it really needs to be protected more, and I wasn't quite happy with the amount of drum noise getting into that piano mic. Secondly, I, I, I don't know about this bass cab. It just was too much. It was too much bleed. And I think maybe a different bass cabinet, maybe an open back bass cabinet, would actually be better, and we can actually protect those drum overheads. Again, there's a lot to unpack here, and this is something that I've tested extensively in my course on how to record live in the studio. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this. These are the techniques that really should introduce you into live recording. And this is actually a great way to save money in the studio if you're musicians. It's a great way to get better energy for your recording. And if you run a studio as a business, it's actually a great advantage to say, I can record a five song EP in a couple of days. We record all the main tracks, and then on day two, we record the vocals. So recording live is such a great way to work and it's a lot of fun. I'd love to know what you think of this. I'm hanging out in the comments below. Yeah.